Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, uh, have today Laura Cha, who is connected to us electronically, live from Hong Kong. It's 9 p.m. in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, I, I think, well, uh, we've already talked about Laura. She's one of the most uh, distinguished executives in Asia. Uh, she is on the Executive Council of Hong Kong. She's a director at HSBC. Uh, she has served in the China Securities Regulatory Commission and recently uh, at the uh, National People's Congress of China, which is a uh, uh, remarkable uh, set of achievements for someone, uh, for any one person. And uh, I understand that the, the, the first uh, Hong Kong uh, citizen to serve in the government of, of the People's Republic. Uh, uh, but the, I guess the, the, the really big thing that uh, uh, comes to my mind is that HSBC is one of the most important and biggest banks in the world. And I looked up and I find that there are five branch offices of HSBC within uh, a few miles of right here. Yes. Uh, anyway, I'll, uh, Laura, uh, I'm looking at you there. Uh, yes. Why don't uh, you, you could introduce, uh, give us a, a talk about what you do and what your thoughts are about the financial situation are, uh, and then we will turn it over to, uh, to questions. And I myself, my career has largely been in the public sector side. Um, although I started out as a lawyer, uh, I was trained as a lawyer and I practiced as a lawyer for um, seven, eight years uh, in the foreign direct investment into China in the 80s. And I dealt with a lot of multinationals and um, in the corporate side, in the finance side. Uh, my foray into the public sector as a regulator was really, it came out of the blue. I was headhunted. Uh, to join the newly found um, Securities and Futures Commission in Hong Kong. That was 1990. And uh, I thought I would do it for a couple years, uh, learn uh, to broaden my horizon and see what it is like to be in the public sector. And uh, I enjoyed what I did, and then I stayed 10 years. And then I was uh, making an offer by the central government, and I went, went to work for the Chinese regulator uh, for almost four years and, and became the first person outside of mainland China to join the Chinese government. Um, so I had a total 14 years of experience as a regulator. And I have to say that it has been hugely gratifying because as a regulator uh, and a policy setter, I was able to facilitate the development of markets in Hong Kong um, in the early days Hong Kong was a, uh, in the early days, I mean in the, in the 70s and the 80s, Hong Kong was a largely local market. Um, the international players like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, they came and went, they took a look and decided the Hong Kong market was too small for them. All that took a change uh, in 1992 when the Chinese government decided that they want to use the Hong Kong market uh, as a way to, um, uh, to help transform or reform the state-owned enterprises. And by that time, I was already at, uh, at the Securities and Futures Commission in Hong Kong. And because of my experience uh, working in the Chinese market in the 80s, I became the only person who was familiar enough with the Chinese market to take on that responsibility of really designing a structure for state-owned enterprises in China to become listed companies in Hong Kong. And uh, it was groundbreaking work. Um, at the time, we knew that it was very important. We didn't know how important it would, have be it would become later on. Um, some 20 years later, Hong Kong market now is a totally international market. All the big, big players are here. And um, 
all the uh, uh, our half of more than half of our market capitalization came from Chinese uh, enterprises. Uh, more than half of the turnover on our stock exchange are from Chinese related companies, a Chinese company directly or what we call red chips. So the coming of the Chinese uh, enterprises to Hong Kong really transformed not only the state-owned enterprises in China, but also the nature and stature of the Hong Kong market. I think today, most people will recognize that Hong Kong is an important financial center. And I would say that without the Chinese enterprises, we would still have been a very local market because our economy itself, Hong Kong's economy, has not been that big. It really is what had happened in China that had propelled our change. And as a regulator, I was fortunate to have that opportunity and to help structure the market and spearhead changes. The other thing that I did at the, as a regulator in Hong Kong was um, in, the, um, in the late 90s, 98, 99, uh, and 2000, um, there was a wave of demutualization of stock exchanges throughout the world. And I helped demutualize the stock and futures exchange in Hong Kong, merged them together, together with our clearinghouse, and we became, the stock exchange of Hong Kong became a listed company. Today, it is the largest, it is an exchange, it has the largest market cap, market cap in the world, more than New York Stock Exchange and uh, London Stock Exchange. Um, and when I went to China, the market was in the nascent state. Uh, it, you know, bearing in mind that it was a socialist, communist socialist country, capitalism was a new thing, and stock market was an even newer thing in 1991. Uh, so I kind of witnessed, and later on was fortunate enough when I went to work in the Chinese government to participate in that growth of the Chinese market. And what I did in my almost four years as a Chinese regulator was to promote corporate governance. Uh, I introduced quarterly reporting, uh, the requirement of independent non-executive directors, and uh, it was exciting times. What I want to say really is, is the public sector work that would, um, at least for me, I felt that I was making a difference. I was able to um, help the market change and um, if things were not right, I, f I felt that I had um, the ability to, be, to, to make things right, to make things correct. Not always successful, I have to say. But what I want to really impress upon you all is that while the private sector work in the financial services is extremely uh, financially rewarding, in the public sector it's less so, but on a different level, I think, um, the policymakers do perform a social good. And um, the good thing about the United States is there is a lot of interchange between the public and private sectors. People do move from the private sector to the public sector and back again. I think that's what makes um, the U.S. market vibrant, among other things. And I think it is a, a tradition that many other countries and jurisdictions want to emulate, namely the people who have been in the private sector, uh, who has the experience, who have market experience, are needed in the public sector. In other words, you cannot have regulators who have very little knowledge of how the market works. At the same time, those people who have been in the public sector uh, have kind of instilled uh, on them the, the discipline of um, an orderly market, uh, doing the right thing for the market. And that, you know, when you have it transplanted or bringing, being brought back into the private sector, it is also a good thing for the, and a healthy for the market as well. The other thing that I want to really talk about, um, other than the public sector work and as a career choice or as a job choice, uh, in the financial services is really the, um, the global, globalized nature of the markets these days. 
I think in my days uh, when I was going to college and law school in the United States, um, the U.S. was, and I don't mean by saying that it is no longer, but it's still everybody looked to the U.S. Uh, to be the center of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, particularly in financial services. Everything happens in the U.S., and to a large extent it still does. But I think the world outside the U.S. has undergone a lot of changes. A globalized market means that today, um, young people will find equally interesting and exciting work opportunity in financial services outside of the United States. I think um, in my days, in the 80s, certainly people, when they say they, if they want to work outside the US, it would be in the mature market like um, Europe, um, the UK, or Japan. I think increasingly more so in the last decade, uh, opportunities in Asia and in Latin America in financial services have become very um, exciting uh, for young graduates anywhere. And I would say if you are equipped as a young um, graduate and you wanted a career in financial services, I think you should not uh, rule out the possibility of working in a foreign country, uh, in the emerging market in particular. I think in an emerging market, you will uh, learn in a way faster because you would be given more opportunities, more responsibility at an early age, and you, your learning curve will be steeper. Uh, and uh, it is also uh, interesting as well as frustrating, I have to say, um, uh, working in a developing market. There are things that you think that you can do, and then there are things that uh, it is not as the rules are not as clear and the uh, environment and, and the people around you are not as sophisticated or uh, educated as you are. But I think in today's world, uh, the globalized market means that the opportunities are everywhere. And I think particularly the emerging markets uh, will offer a lot of opportunities. I think um, China does not have a lack of regulation. Uh, there are lots of regulation in China. What I would say is that there has to be better application and enforcement of regulations rather than uh, periodic and not consistent regulation. I think one of the most important thing for the market in terms of uh, regulation is that they have to be clear, they have to be consistently applied, and they have to be fair. Uh, it is not a lack of regulation that, um, uh, that, that is the major problem. Uh, I think as in many emerging markets, China is still trying to grope with the issue of uh, stringent enforcement. And I think the regulators in China recognize that there is a lot that they need to, uh, they, they have to do better in terms of enforcement. Uh, and the problem that I see in China is that it is developing so fast, the market is way ahead, um, developing faster and quicker and, and bigger than the, um, the government and the regulator have anticipated. If we put ourselves back um, in the US, and let's say in um, the crash of the late 20s and when the SEC was set up in 1934, uh, I would say China is probably slightly better than the U.S. in those days. Uh, but, you know, if we compare with the development of the U.S. market in the last five decades or so, uh, of course the U.S. has developed a lot more. And uh, China does not have the luxury to wait 50 years for its rules and enforcement culture to develop. And it is catching up. Uh, whether the lack of regulation is therefore an impediment to foreign investment, I think you'll have to look at it from several angles. Um, China to date is the largest uh, recipient of foreign direct investments. So, you know, in a way, if the conditions in China is so bad, it would not have attracted so much foreign direct investment. I'm not saying that the environment in China is really you know, top-notch to compare with the developed market. But there probably are enough opportunities and people do make enough money so that it is, by statistics, the largest recipient of foreign direct investment. And that is, you know, a fact compiled by, you know, international um, agencies. 
So I don't think that it has been an impediment. It is an impediment when we talk about individual cases. It is far, you know, it's far from satisfactory. Could I just interject a question there? Some people say that the SEC in the United States could use much more resources. Does China give enough resources to enforcement? It seems to me that there is a problem in emerging countries where everywhere mm -hmm. that it's expensive. And the country has a budget, right, which is still right. attracted to other things. So do you think that the China devotes enough resources to yeah. enforcement? I think um, every regulator would tell you uh, that uh, they need more resources as far as enforcement is concerned. I think China should cer could, could certainly do with more. Um, I think one aspect uh, is that you have to have enough people to carry out the enforcement. And uh, it is uh, trying to catch up. And as I said, you know, because the market is developing so fast uh, that the regulators are always trying to play catch up. And uh, that is not ideal. I think the SEC could do with more resources. I would absolutely agree with that. And any, any um, regulators you go to, they always felt that uh, the under-resourced aspect is the enforcement. Mm 